streaming twice is probably bad. Um, this build's not great versus everything, but this build is trying to try to beat Mono Red a little bit harder than the other builds. I'm kind of panicking. It's, it's pretty annoying to me. It almost, it almost made me just log off and not come back on. Uh, so tilted about that. I think it should be back on now. Uh, we'll keep this hand pretty bad, but it's fine versus anything but basic mountain because we have the double scry land. Yeah. Well, fine versus anything that we're good versus anyway, I mean. Literally going to hold these to try to scrow one. It's probably a mistake. I probably should have played one of those on turn one on hindsight. Did not have a second land? Oh, apparently I hadn't let them get. Apparently I hadn't let them get to that phase. That was kind of weird. Yeah, I'm completely unfocused now because I am pretty upset at myself. Blame, I blame uh, Blade Ogre for talking me into streaming two leagues in a night. So instead of having one good stream, now I'm going to have two bad ones. Is this the... Is this the deck that the Candio's been playing with, like, Elder Deep Fiends and, like, Servants and weird black spells like Scarab God? If so, we probably just can't beat it, right? Like, beating Deep Fiend's pretty hard for this deck. Not impossible. But that helps. Yeah, I really should have played the Farmlands on turn one. That was stupid of me. I don't know why I didn't. This is still fine for turn five, but
They have to keep a pretty loose hand if they go Spire Bluff Canal into Swamp to be a Teamer Scarab God deck. Like they keep no green mana? That doesn't seem super likely. But you could be right. I'll counterspell anything I can counterspell, I guess. Hopefully, uh, hopefully not playing this on turn one isn't going to come back and kill us, but it could. Could mess our turn five up pretty bad. Oh, he wasn't dual queuing, was he? Nope, he's just slow. Got it. Yeah, but this land's just going to be awkward. Because we may need to try to find a Fumigate for the next turn, and that doesn't really work. Unless we also get a land now. Also can't cycle the hieroglyph and play a glimmer on the next turn if I miss. So that's even more poor cards. Well, maybe he doesn't have anything. Maybe it's just a deep fiend. Right, well, we'll play it this turn again. Kind of sucks how everything worked out. Oh, crap. I don't have the donate thing back up. I got to remember to keep that up. Feels good to be playing approach again, though. Had a nice couple of days off. Uh, I've only played it in one event, and the event I played it in was the Channel Viral 21 land event, and I struggled with having lands the entire tournament. I struggled pretty bad versus post-board matchups as well that had, uh, that had like a bunch of negates in the deck as well. Now, that was a small sample size. I've only played it once, so I played it four or five rounds is how I played it. I think it was four rounds. Oh, what card do we not want? Goodbye, Rivulet. Opponent seems to be flooding pretty hard. Well, I guess they can have that. There's not a lot we can do about it. Like, I feel like it needs 23 lands. I didn't look at Simon Nelson's build from Grand Prix Turin yet. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And I kind of probably need to do that. But I haven't checked out his build yet. It was fun, especially when it was functioning. Yeah, that that was that was my biggest concern. It felt like it needed more lands.
I guess I'm just casting approach and not worrying about the wrath. This could turn out really bad if he is on uh, Elder Deep Fiend, which I assume he is based on how this game is played. Oh, I've not saw that build at all. I saw, uh, I got paired versus a Mardu build with the uh, Red Hulk that beat me to death the other night. Just beat me to death. I guess we're not dead on board to a Deep Fiend. We're just not happy about a Deep Fiend. Surely we would be dead on board to a Deep Fiend, wouldn't we? Eh, maybe not. We would have uh, used the Supreme Will and tried to hit a cast out or something, so maybe not. In this build, I'm not running scavenging grounds. N no, There's, I can't. I can't think of a reason I would even want them. All right. Anyway, versus all the teamer decks, I generally always bring these things into block with. Uh, I believe the 40s are less good than normal. I think you still want all the approaches, all the the uh, the meltdowns give you extra precaution versus a uh, a uh, long tusk cub, which is one of the more scary things. On the play, I'll bring this approach back in. The damn spirit creature. What spirit creature? But this deck just doesn't beat Reanimator. There, there, there's nothing you can do to make this deck beat Reanimator consistently. Like, even if you exile their graveyard every single turn, the Reanimator deck draws so many cards that they can find, you know, three negates. They can find three transgresses. They can find their lost legacy. And they can make sure all of them resolve. So, like, like Reanimator is just not something, if they've came with lost legacies and transgresses and negates, that you can ever beat. And God Pharaoh's Gift is also not another is also a, not a very good match for you. You win game one versus both of those decks pretty easily, but game two and three is pretty hard. Basically, you bring in the Regal Caracals and just hope you can beat them. I, I just don't think you can ever get an approach versus those guys. Like, versus either of those decks, I just don't think an approach ever resolves. So, like, it doesn't seem to me like it matters what you're doing to their graveyard if your spell can't resolve. Like, you're just getting extra turns, and on those extra turns, I still feel like my spell just never resolves. Thank you for following Habic 201, uh, Danuk 89. Appreciate it. Uh, this is a, this is Snap Mulligan. Snap Mulligan Arena. Uh, that's not good, but we'll keep it. Don't want to approach. But, but how, how, can, how can you guarantee that you're going to win with an approach post-board? Like, they're going to find their lost legacy 100% of the time, and they're going to resolve their lost legacy. You just can't stop it. If they're not prepared for the match, sure, you can beat it. But, like, you can't, you can't really stop them from playing the lost legacy. They have, they have more negates than you. They will draw more cards than you. And you have to tap seven of your mana to cast the first approach, which makes it a lot easier for them to win a counterspell war. I just don't. I I I just can't win with approach post board. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I've not been able to though, which is why I've not tried to fix the match. They don't have lost legacy. You can beat them, but. Every one of my, my opponents that have played Reanimator have cast a Lost Legacy on me, and some have even played Invasive Surgery on me. 
Some have placed a lost legacy and invasive surgery on me. So yeah, this time. We'll counterspell that one too. I mean I I I win game one real easy, just game two and three, like if you have if you tap seven mana for a lost legacy, you have to have a minimum of two more negate. Of seven mana for an approach, you have to have nine mana to even play around a lost legacy. And that's providing that they have zero counter spells or zero transgresses to like get that negate out of your hand. So it seems it seems seems unlikely, but maybe I'm doing something wrong. Like when you get into nine and ten mana of the game, your supreme wills and sensors are no longer counter spells. So it's like you're playing your. Uh, you're having to win with your couple negates and couple dispels when they have a lot less mana than you? Or when they've tapped a lot less mana than you, rather? I guess I'll kill anything I can here since I'm just casting the uh, Meow Meow next turn. Scarab God would kind of suck, probably. They have a force in their deck that does not match the rest of their lands, and it may or may not offend me. Just, just any of them in general. They're, they've all seemed about the same. Alright, so I guess if he's getting the mountain, he's playing like Chandra. Could have played around that, but... Now he can't save the Chandra? I don't mind to get rid of one of my cats to kill a Chandra. He's down to three cards in hand, and we already have an approach and a sensor. So, unless he's playing, like, a glory bringer or a big Chandra, we're probably in pretty good shape. And he needs another land for the big Chandra? Two mana, he's probably... Oh, he's just cycling? What a wonderful day. Kinda, I kind of want to attack the Caracol into the Refiner Rogue. How bad is that? It has to be pretty bad, right? Well, the only things I ever counterspell in that match are... Uh, Liliana and that's fine. Or Liliana and what you call it? Huh, that was a good draw. Liliana and their other counter spells. Harsh mentor. Kind of an odd card. 
think I want both of these. Eh, we can do better than that one. Maybe we can't. Is it is is it wrong just to attack both of these cats into his two guys? So I can put a two turn clock on the table? I feel like that's fine. We're a long way from being able to get the value on this anyway. Fair enough. I might try that. That sounds fun. That sounds all sorts of fun. That's well, a two turn clock. It may be good enough. We still have the four fumigates to find if it isn't, and we still have an approach. So when I sacrifice my land, that's going to deal two damage to me? Kind of peculiar. All right, well, we don't care about that. He certainly isn't beating us on the table. We do care about that. Unless it's just a harsh mentor. Okay, I guess we didn't care about it. So this can attack. This can attack for about a million. I don't care if it hits me for about a million. All he has to do is brick on two draw steps and we win there. He didn't use his energy, by the way. Just as a, a little side note there. Take care, man. Have a have a good uh, time at your work, and thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like, I'm not trying to argue with you. You're, you're clearly playing a different build and have different experiences than I am, but I'm just telling you the reasons that that I've not personally tried to fix the match. And the match hasn't been popular enough for me to, like, to jump through those hoops, you know? Like, if it was a super popular match, maybe I'd jump through those hoops, but it's just not been real popular. It was for, like, a three-day period a while back. I do have more hard counter spells in this build than normal. I do have two negates to the spell and two summary dismissals in our board right now. All right. Well, 1 0. Back to playing versus Teamer, which is pretty much what I'd like to play versus every round of this deck. Feels at home to be playing this deck. Oh, if you're in chat, by the way, you can type exclamation mark deck list and pop up. Two different deck lists, one with this picture in case we're in a game and you just want to look at it, and one with like all the cards that you can hover over and actually read. For like example, say you didn't know what uh, Cast Out does or Blessed Alliance does, you can like click on it and read it. And uh, down below in the Twitch chat, there's links to both the Twitter and the YouTube. I'd appreciate it if you could follow any of the Twitch, Twitter, and or YouTube. And if you're watching from the YouTube... Uh, every video that you watch has a link to the Twitter, the Twitch, and the description below the video. Go ahead and click the old play here. Right, so we won the dash row. This hand's kind of odd. I actually think it's good enough to keep versus most opponents. There's certain matches that this hand will just be miserable versus. Like if our opponent leads off with a Falcon Wrath Gorger or whatever. Like we just don't ever win that game. But uh... 
most of the control decks and stuff, this will be fine versus. I'll go ahead and sackle this farmland. Could be a mirror match. The mirror match is pretty miserable. And the changes we made to our deck make our mirror match worse than normal. It could still be like blue white. Uh, well, with the second island means he's probably not playing anything but the mirror. These supreme wheels don't do a whole lot, especially until like later in the game. So you can typically find another one. Looking for draw twos and approaches. There's an approach. Any order on the bottom. A couple of farmlands are a little useful, I guess. Hmm. Well, I was sitting over here trying to decide whether I would counterspell his Glimmer or not, or not, but I'm certainly not going to now that we've drawn our own Glimmer. We'll just offer him, let him counterspell it if he wants. We're really just hoping to find another approach. We already have seven lands. Sure. Uh, we won't take that, but we will take this. Cast out's kind of nice in case he has a little Gideon. The effort hub's very odd. Maybe he's not playing approach. Maybe he's playing like some otter deck. Like some Gear Hulk build, maybe? We're just going to slam the approach next turn. We don't even care if it gets counterspelled. Bottom. Bottom. Not an approach. Sackle. We've gone through close to 30 cards now, so... Be nice to find another approach. He could censor this. Don't care if he censors this. We have three more in the deck. All right, not a censor. So we have two draw steps to find another approach. Providing he's playing approach himself, rather. And he may not be. We still don't know that if he is or not. It 
Tamio. Well, that's not something I really expected him to have. Alright. Kinda interested in what he's playing then. Yeah, it'd be really nice if we did, I fanboy four twenty. There's a Bant version? So mana's already awkward enough that I don't know why you would want to play the Bant version. Like, you don't want to play cards like this. So we know it's two cards down now. We could technically get to it and cast it this turn, but it probably wouldn't resolve, so I don't think there's any reason to. Sure, then cast a Glamour. Let's see what they play. Let's see how we will continue to approach our turn. Start with cycling a sensor. Probably shouldn't have cycled the cast out. Cycling the cast out was actually probably pretty wrong of me because they could just have their own cast out now. Looks like they do. Kind of disappointing. Yep, I shouldn't have got rid of my cast out. I knew it about as soon as I said it too. As soon as I did it, I kind of said it. I we'll have to go look and see if we can find another one, I guess. I've gone through three, though. Well, that doesn't seem like a good time for you to play that. Like he knows I have this in my hand, right? And he knows I can pay for a Supreme Will. Oh, so they have Void Shatters in their deck. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. It's often who uh, plays the first approach wins because you can generally win the turn they cast their approach. Alright, so this is the Bant version. I clearly have no idea what's in their deck. Um, the spells probably have to be good. Negates have to be good. Uh, dismissals have to be good. And the Cat Scratch Fevers are probably good. Um, what's bad? There's just no chance that a 40s are good. There's no chance any of these six spells are good. Uh, 
can probably drop a fumigate as well. Don't want to cut more fumigates though, because they could have caracols or they could have like the big sphinx post board, stuff like that. Anyway, so we'll just jam this and see what goes on here. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for stopping by. Same for you, it's a fanboy. I don't think I've noticed either of you guys before. I, I, I don't know this is the first I've saw of the deck. When, uh, when I was considering tuning a green build before I decided the mana was too awkward, I wanted to play it with a bunch of deserts and a Sheffit monitor because Sheffit monitor's kind of a better hieroglyphic illumination. You get the land directly into play and you're usually trying to find the land anyway for your draw spells. But uh, the mana was just too awkward. Like, coming to play tapped lands is not something you want to play on a deck that often needs to cast its 5 mana spell on turn 5 and its 7 mana spell on turn 7 because it's just too many games where you, like, draw that coming to play tapped land that exact turn or whatever. Also, thank you for following both Brianathus and Donnie2733. Appreciate the follows. But this is the first time I've saw their deck, so I'm not entirely sure. I think this hand's a keep. It's uh, This is kind of already a mulligan. But we have one hard counterspell, and we have one scry. Eh, maybe it's not a keep. It's probably a keep. And we're on the draw. I think it's a keep. I think this is better than our average six. I don't think it's much better than our average six. I think it's like right on the line. No, I agree. I agree. That's one of the reasons I abandoned the deck. Just like in my head it seemed decent. And the more I played it, the worse it seemed. Or the more I played with it. I don't think I ever actually played it on stream. So me and my opponent both have some awkward mana here. But the, the monitor seemed so good. If they're this mana screwed, I wonder if it's worth it to negate a Supreme Will if they cast it. Probably not, because they could just untap and cast Glamour and get their lands back. Um, we'll have to see what more of the set is right now, but uh, it's going to be pretty hard to replace a lot of these cards post-board. Um, as of right now, probably... More Ether Meltdowns and the Gideons back in over the Blessed Alliances, and then that's really how the deck loses. Alright, so we need to find lands. We did not find lands. This is a little disappointing. You know, I'm just going to play this main phase. I think finding the lands valuable enough. I'm not sure what he can resolve that would be the end of the world for me. I can't believe that he hasn't cycled that already, even though he's missing lands. Our opponent is, in fact, a madman. But we missed the land drop, so we're probably just going to lose. Yeah, well, I'm going to slam the kitty. I don't have anything better to do with the land. I don't care if he counterspells it. Wow. He even cycled a land. Well, at least they didn't have to approach, right? They 
They don't have an approach. I'll counterspell a draw too. This uh, the Supreme Will is not very good in counterspell wars anyway. It's just way too hard. Wow, I took a point of damage when I had a Prairie Stream in play. You guys didn't see that. Actually, counterspell that as well. Hone us down to one card. You just want to find an untapped land basically this turn. My computer is making all sorts of noise. I am dropping frames like a madman. How bad does the stream? Is it like, is it lagging up and stuff a lot? Untap land? That's not an untap land. Ah, right, thank you. So we're going to sack their own Catacrack? It'd be kind of cool if we had our Sunbury Dismissal back. And they're back to six, they're back to the seven. I'm going to go ahead and Glimmer here, because I would censor that, but I would not spend a negate on that. Well, you're not a land, and you're not a land, so you're both on bottom. And, uh, alright, well, I guess it resolves. I guess it resolves. So hopefully they didn't draw two out of three cards, because we know they didn't have one in their hand. Sorry, two out of four cards. We know they didn't have one in their hand. So there are six cards down. I'm not going to play it this turn. May play it next turn. I mean, you, we still don't know that he doesn't have cats. Like, he could still have cats. Or he st still could have the big Sphinx. So we now he's five cards down now. What do you guys think about playing the Primal Amulet, Primal Wellspring in this deck post-rotation? If you cast Second Sun off the Wellspring, you win on the spot, which is kind of cool. I have no idea what either of those cards are. <laughs> Sorry, I just have no idea. Summary Dismissal, that gives us a little protection for case he plays his other one. Um, I'm just going to slam it. If he's got two counter spells and a way to get an approach, which is going to be four cards down, then we just lose. Alright, well he didn't have anything. He didn't have anything either game. Um, I don't think I can look those cards up yet with cards, can I? Primal Amulet. No, they're not they're not listed yet. Maybe it's just card. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I have no idea what those cards are and I only have one monitor, so I can't really look them up while I'm streaming. Anyway, let's pop the deck list up again. Uh well I was gonna tell you guys to click the YouTube link and follow it and the Twitter link and follow it, but I don't have time. Yeah, playing it around. What do we got? All right, this sounds fine. <clears throat> by the way, thanks for stopping by, Dastardly. I believe it's the first time I've seen you today as well. Had uh, not had a whole lot of people in here today, but we've had a lot of people I've not saw before, which is very sweet. Tried to do some editing YouTube videos last night for some special content, but I failed miserably.
Thank you for the follow, Alatrablesi88. Or versus Spirits. This match is horrible, friends. He attacks with the Selfless Spirit and doesn't have a... Counterspell, I guess. We're okay. He did not even attack with it. This man is a forward thinker. <laughs> I don't know if that was a misclick or if he didn't mean to, but like not attacking with it is good. I'm pretty excited about it too. I need to read more of them, but... <laughs> so I guess now we find out which it was. Yeah, I've 5 would have approached two or three times. Not as much as I'd like, but some. I think he just misclicked because, like, he's clearly, like, jumping all over the attack now. Yes, I just cast the Fumigate. It gets his spirit off the table, which is something. And then we can, like, start trying to cast Meltdowns and stuff on his other cards. Uh, playing it this turn as opposed to waiting also protects us from Archangel Avison. Oh, no, never mind. He could just have a second spirit and we could cry. This match feels like a match that's not going to go my way. Might be able to win pre-board by just, like, hitting some pro approaches off these glimmers or whatever, but uh, post-board... When he gets the negates and stuff in his deck, I uh, don't know how it's going to go. When I say I don't know how it's going to go, it feels like it's going to be kind of miserable. Especially if he has like a second spell queller for this. That would be kind of bad. Ooh, a cast out. Cast out's probably good enough to keep, right? Yeah, we'll keep the cast out. Put that on the bottom. It's kind of odd to sacrifice that there. Like, that selfless spirit has more value, right? And I obviously probably do not need energy. Looks like he's just monument. I'm going to be greedy here. Um, I'm going to be greedy here and use the cast out on the spell queller. And if he has like a number of spells, it's going to work out really, really poorly. But the upside's just too strong. It's probably not the right play. The upside of this resolving is just way too strong, though. If it goes wrong, we can still hit a second Fumigate. Uh, two modes. They sack a creature. We gain some life. Zerhan's been very bad. Monument's kind of a strong draw. Yeah, let's start with the main phase of drawing. Okay, then. Well, their draw's been very, very bad, but... Yeah. We've drawn 11 lands out of 19 cards, so it's pretty bad for us as well. They have enough mana to get a Selfless Spirit on the table? 
So we pretty 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 well gonna have to draw like running approaches to win this game. A cast out for the militia wouldn't be terrible, but running approaches is uh most likely what we need. This doesn't even do anything here. Doesn't do anything next turn either. Running approaches, I think, still good enough to win, though. He could mess up and use that. Doesn't feel like something he should do, though. Running approach is no longer good enough. Running approach is no longer good enough. So I have no out now. He can still attack for lethal, but... So like just on board he attacks for 23 damage, um, that's 24, 25 damage. So yeah, we're dead, but it happens. Like I said, I think this match was pretty bad. If he keeps, if he keeps putting, uh, letting us gain two life for every creature he plays, like we may survive this. I think he's still attacking for 25, but I've not done the math. Or over 25. He could have cast enough creatures to got us there, though. He had a Supreme Will, so that wouldn't have resolved. Anyway, so post-board. I like to bring in all of this crap. I actually like to bring in the negates as well. And I like to take out some of the more clunky draw spells. Bless, or Blessed Alliance doesn't feel good versus anything that has Fraben Inspector. The Hieroglyphs feel a little too slow. Um, the Forties haven't felt wonderful. And the Fumigates aren't great because of the Spirits, but sometimes they're playable, so... Go ahead and keep it. Keep three of them. Probably shouldn't. This is one of the harder matches. Any match with a uh, clock and counter spells is a pretty hard match. Alright, well, this is acceptable. We already have an approach in hand. We have a counter spell that can either get a selfless spirit, a Hannah Weir, or a uh, monument. Whichever one that he plays first. And if he doesn't play any of those spells, we can cycle it. This is one reason I don't leave Blessed Alliances in. Or didn't leave. I mean, it, it didn't attack the one turn. I'm pretty sure he misclicked. I think he would have attacked. Double uh, Frame Inspector actually puts a lot of pressure on us. Triple Frame Inspector puts an enormous amount of a pressure on us. It is something that our uh, Fumigates would be good versus, though. I have to cast out a Fraben Inspector. I'm going to get real, real, real sad. Probably won't have to, though.
kind of awkward for me. I'm going to try to cast out that. He could have Metallic Rebuke, but we can get lucky and draw a Fumigate if he does. Go ahead and play this now to try to get around a selfless spirit or a negate. Um, I'm actually going to put the cat on top because the cat can shore up the ground. Interesting to see what he has. A four Fraven Inspector. All right. There's a place out of those. Want to hit a land. That's not a land. That's a land. Try to shore up the ground a little bit here. He could have Metallic Rebuke. Uh, he paused last turn when I cast the cast out, so it kind of made me think he had one. But he, he may not. Okay, he does. I was right, unfortunately. Which is, uh, pretty bad for us. Because there's a good chance he has a negate for the descend as well. <clears throat> Hopefully it's just like spell quellers and stuff. No negate, please. All right, well, we probably lose. Could just cast a Regal Caracol again and try to get extra turns. Uh, plays around the gate. And all we really want is turns here. Oh, wow. Either I lagged up or he had F6 pressed. I'm not sure which. Not actually sure which it was. Think I'm lagging, though? Well, I have to try to cast the Sin next turn anyway, I think. Because of the Westfell Abbey. Could block it with both to give myself enough life to survive Westfell Abbey, but... Alright, well, we didn't hit any other spells, so... Just in case he has a counter spell, I'm not going to go ahead and attack for the two life. Let's the gate like we fought. So an untapped land wins the game. Pretty easily. That's not an untapped land if he does it like that. So a cast out would still win the game, but a cast out was going to win the game either way. We wanted to play around the Westfell. All right, well, Angel does it as well. All right, but we got crushed. But again, I don't think we're supposed to win this match. They just have too many counter spells. Us losing game one was a little unfortunate, but it's just not a match you typically win. Anyway. Anybody in chat can look down below if they want and find links to my Twitter and my YouTube. Would appreciate follows on any of these platforms that you can. And if you're on the YouTube, you can find a link to the deck list, the uh, Twitter, and the uh, Twitch all in the descriptions below the video. Also, if you're in the Twitch chat, you can type exclamation mark deck list to see a deck list at any time. Uh, this hand's a little loosey, but we're going to keep it. We have an authority for turn one, and we have a one cycling spell and one removal spell. Um, most decks in this format are a little bit slow. So, like, you can afford to have a little slower keep. I 
They showed us basic islands, so they're probably just Scarab God dot deck. If they're Scarab God dot deck, this hand's pretty bad. Still gonna go ahead and play the forty though. Can probably no longer cycle to cast out. Scarab gods are good. Could just be reanimator or something as well. That seems to be what it is. Keeping cast outs good versus reanimator as well. I feel if he is reanimator, I feel like a pretty big favorite game one. I feel like a pretty bad match game two and three. Don't. Scarab God does not help the deck. It's real cute. Doesn't really help the deck at all. Yeah, but like, the black cards don't do anything. They make your mana more awkward. Just more glory bringers are better. See, doesn't have anything in his graveyard yet. I guess I'm not going to cycle any of this stuff. You so seldom reanimate stuff of that match, though, especially in games you wasn't already going to win. I won't say never, but. Also, Dares is kind of cool on his side of the board. I like Hostile Desert as a land pretty good. So I'm not really familiar with their uh, deck list. Strategic planning, don't care about. So they've got an Ishkana in their graveyard finally and a Kalatos in their graveyard. Two cards that I don't care about. Don't care about champion with wits. They've already played their land for the turn, so F6 value. It is possible to millstone these decks. Guess we need to look at their graveyard. They did not discard their swamp, so. No, they still have access to the swamp. Eh, they, they might print something else in the next set or something. Probably not. I don't know. Maybe next block. I'll miss creature lands, that's for sure. That's the swamp they showed us. Ever after. That seems like a cycle target. Or not a cycle target, a sensor target. Rip. Can't talk. Too dumb. I guess we'll cast, cycle to cast out now. Second approach is pretty nice. I don't think they have Counterspell's main deck usually. I think they have to tap a lot of their mana pretty often game one. So 
So the hostile desert's coming? Interesting. All right, then. Well, they can sacrifice a thing. They still have counter spell up to stop a super impactful spell. And if they tap seven mana to play their champion next turn, we're in a pretty good spot. Yep, yeah, I was talking about main deck. I didn't know what they had. I don't want to counterspell that, but I guess I won't bother. Alright, I'll counterspell the second one. It's too much damage in case they did have like a negate or something. So if they don't have a negate or any removal spells, we'll win next turn. If they do have that stuff, there's no telling uh, what'll happen. Kinda hoping they just buy back the champion of the wits, because that's good for us. Well, that's not good for us. Maybe their second play is Liliana or whatever? We could beat a Liliana. Alright. So we got this one. They have nothing in their graveyard that stops the approach in our hand. So like I said, game one's typically a little easier because they don't have their counter spells and stuff, but game two and three just feel miserable. Yeah, so we gotta go to the sideboard now. Um, we're gonna want all the counter spells. We're gonna want the descends. The Blessed Alliances don't seem as good here, the 40 doesn't seem as good here, and the Meltdowns don't seem great here. Which means I'm sideboarding out more cards than I want to bring in. I guess I can bring in one cat. The cat, the cats and stuff don't seem good either because of Noxious Gear Hulk. All right. If they have lost legacy, or if they have invasive surgery, like, and they and they draw it, we just won't win. I pretty well know we won't win if they have that stuff. I don't think there's anything we can do about it, though. It's something we know about our deck before the matches ever start, right? It's like something that needs to be addressed in our deck construction, but I don't think we can address it without weakening ourselves versus other matches. So we just have to be happy with whatever percentage of games they don't draw those spells. Well, that's a good one. I have basically every early spell I want. What, uh... What he takes of this transgress lets us know a lot about his hand as well. This is a match that maybe the five drop Sphinx would be good in. Hello, Caravan. Uh, I don't think I've saw you around before. Um, I'm from Eastern Kentucky. 
And yeah, like, this this is just a problem with this deck. Like, I was arguing with somebody earlier that says this is kind of an easy match, but you just can't stop this spell. And your creature plan doesn't work very well. So, like, what are you supposed to do in spots like this? Like, we have to just keep playing and trying to mill them. We have three rivulets is the only ways we have to win the game now. I guess there's some percentage where we, like, cycle a land and cycle a uh, descend. Where are you from? Yep, Eastern Kentucky, from the hills of Appalachia. Oh, nice, nice. It's real pretty down that way. Yep. Which means you often have to wait till like 9 or 11 mana to even try it and protect it with your negate. Which, it's just easier for them to protect it with their negate. But like, we still have this that can win some games, and like I said, Rivulets can win. Obviously a lot harder. Could have counterspelled that, but I don't think it's worth it. I've never been that far out west. Don't know don't know much about the area out there. I assume it's kind of humid. For some reason when I hear Colorado I think deserty. But like I said, I've not been that far west. I don't really know anything about that area. Yeah, we can resolve that. So Liliana's the card we care most about. Kind of saving most of our counter spells for Liliana. His Dream Stealers are kind of annoying too. Just all of his and bomb cards are kind of annoying. The Golden Home of Coolers. <laughs> nice. Uh, I guess I need more counter spells, so we'll just keep them both. Screw it. The cast out's actually a good spell. It means one Liliana can resolve and we not lose. Or end of turn cast out can be cast to try to get the little gift to give us more time, but like, unless he's milling himself pretty hard, like, we're not in a great shape. Yeah. Oh, I will cast this. Wouldn't mind to have a few more blue lands. If he doesn't play anything that has to be counterspelled this turn, we'll uh, probably Supreme Will to try to hit one. Try to hit a blue land, that is. So we can only cast one spell anyway. We can cast two spells if it's the Supreme Wills, but... That's kind of fun. Hey, we hit the land anyway. So I think I'm lagging pretty badly right now. Thank you for following Champ120 Gamer. Another Lost Legacy? What could they call off the second one? Non-Artifact, Non-Land. Do I care about anything else in my deck? 
Yeah, sure. Well, summary dismissal it too, I guess. Yeah, so my opponent has at least three lost legacies. Yep, whoever said I'm supposed to win this match with approaches, I think you're crazy. Yeah, I'm dropping frames like crazy. I guess winnable. Like, we've not lost, but, like, it's certainly not a match that we're going to win often. Sure. So, got a graph widow in her graveyard now? Don't need you. Hmm. We'll reserve our life total as long as we can. We can still stop a Liliana from hitting the board unless he also has a negate. If he does also have a negate, we have a cast out. It's up to six cards now, though. Transgress. Well, that just seems to me like a card that's going to resolve. So he took the Descend. Alright, well, another creature we need to counterspell. He can play around the Supreme Will on the next turn anyway. It's kind of cute that we drew a Supreme Will in that spot. He may not play around the second one. So ever after, targeting those two, which means I have enough mana to cycle. And to try to Supreme Will it. If he has Negate, that sucks. <laughs> Well, he's down to two cards. Nice to draw four would be nice. Or draw two. So opponent still has 33 cards left in her library, and we're really at the top decking stage of the game. Not a lot we can do about that thing. So Descend would be a useful card. I have one left in the deck. The uh, three Fumigates would be playable, but a Glimmer of Genius is what we just want. Oh, 
We'll take the gifts we are given. Really gonna have to hit a glimmer pretty quickly, I think, though. More card advantage. So how are we supposed to beat three, uh... How are we supposed to beat three, uh, thingies again? Three lost legacies. I don't think we've made any errors this game. Go ahead and play the land. Even if we were to draw our third rivulet, he still has ten more cards. We haven't drawn any draw twos, like just one the whole game though, so like maybe that would have some impact on it. It's a two turn clock as it is. Alright, well. This spell could resolve and help the clock a little. They've not played in the gate yet, so that's kind of like helpful, I guess. We have one draw step to try to find a to try to find a raft. And that may not be good enough. Sure. Well, we found a glamour. Uh, if we keep you, we technically survive another turn. Versus what's on board. Alright, surviving another turn is better than not. He's pressing F6, so he at least doesn't have a negate in his hand if he does have one. Going to one. And we have to get lucky and hit pretty good here. I think we have actually a fairly high percentage to hit. I'm going to go ahead and use this on my opponent because there's some percentage chance that uh, I have to tap a lot of mana next turn and I would like to be able to do this, that last case scenario. So they have scarab gods and stuff. Yeah, well, I guess we just get to look at their deck. I tried to see if they have any negates or whatever, because like, I don't have to bring in the dispel and stuff if we don't ever see a negate. Yeah, it looks like our dispel doesn't target anything in their deck. Yep, yeah, doesn't look like our dispel targets anything in their deck. Got kind of close. Alright, so game three. We're going to play a game like this. I don't need to dispel anymore. I really didn't need to bless it alliance to begin with. 
Maybe I'll just bring these in. Maybe the meltdowns are better. Let's try, just try to mill them in a different way. These cards buy a lot of time. They're also not that great, especially when our opponent has Scarab Gods. It's just not a kill condition versus this deck's the problem. Like, they just can't kill versus him. I think I cut a couple of approaches, maybe. I wonder if I can just cut off four approaches. Seems somewhat tricky. What else would we take out? Say I wanted to try to get the Limvalas in. Alright, we'll try this. Doesn't seem like it's a plan that can work. We can still just win with the approach versus some draws. This hand seems fine. I mean, he has three lost legacies, man. Not one, not two, he's got at least three. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I think the thing that really killed us game two, like, we had a we had a hand that could actually beat that. We had a hand that could beat what he does, but like we didn't draw any draw twos and we just ran out of cards. Have to draw the draw twos in that match. Or in this match. I didn't want any of them in. They all just seem bad. We can't we can't protect our five drops. Like we're just never going to be able to protect a five drop. He can kill it to turn when we play it on five mana every time. It's a second noxious. Well, we have a very slow hand this game. We didn't sideboard out any of our card draw spells. Well, he can have that. Like the plan's literally to mill him, so. He's gone through three gear hulks already. Could have ate probably another like 20 seconds off of his clock if we wanted last round. Cycle of pull. Thank you for following Eduardo and the DTX Overkill. Appreciate it. If anybody cares, they can also click the links below and follow my Twitter and my YouTube as well. All the follows help promote. It is very nice. I 
don't actually have an answer to that card. It's kind of awkward. Kind of don't have an answer in the deck. actually don't have an answer to that in the whole deck, do we? There's a cat that we can play, but then he just resolves Lumvala, or just resolves Liliana and we die. So we have to get enough mana to play the cat and try to protect it? Or we have to run out of counter spells and then just jam the cat and pray one of the two. So he wants to get two noxious gear hulks. Alright, we'll counter spell that. Can't let that one resolve because. Then we'd have to tap out to kill them. Yeah, he's got 36 cards left in his deck and uh, 7 in his hand. Like, not sure how we're supposed to win. If the Ever After resolves, it goes back on the bottom of his deck or something. Sure, we can't really do anything about this. Some point we have to play this cat and just hope he can't kill it, but I have to draw a negate or something first. He may not be able to cast Liliana now because he could just be afraid to have a second approach. If he's got a Lost Legacy, he may have to play the Lost Legacy. We're fine if he takes the approach. We just hope he doesn't have a land and a Liliana. That would be... That'd be... That'd be tragic. Does get to see our hand though, which is super disappointing. He's basically at 27 cards, so we need him to mill himself for 27 cards still. Not sure how that's supposed to work. Liliana's the card we care most about. We just want to draw on the gate. We want to draw on the gate and play a Caracol. Caracol? Caracol? A Regal. Thank you for following Will Watt and Gudino650. Well, that's a land. All right, I give up. I think I'm just going to play my cat. If this is an ever after we can cycle the cast out to try to get lucky. He could just not have it too, you know. He just have like 45 lands in his hand. He has removal spells. I didn't notice those game too. There's at least one more land in his hand. Sure, Liliana can resolve. Snap Blockerino.
That's not a land. That's not a land at all. Oh, we'd try, rather try to get to Liliana than anything. F6 value. Wow, we didn't hit a land. That's pretty unfortunate. Really was hoping to hit a land out of those three card draws. I think our opponent has too many cards for us to actually put up a fight here. Regal Caracal is the card we needed most out of this hand. It's going to be hard for us to beat the Hostile Desert, especially when we could take 10 this turn. 10's a lot. Maybe, maybe I should have left Blessed Alliance in to kill the desert. Yeah, but we have nothing that can kill this. Like, not being able to kill this is pretty huge. Oops, we don't want to play that one yet. There's still some percentage chance that we get to get a 4-4 out of it at some point in this game. Six mana. Um, all right, I guess we just keep our sweepers. Unless he picks one of them. Oh, sweet, he picked one of them. He's only got one card in hand. Like, drawing another cat might do something pretty good right now. That's a scarab god. That's disappointing. We have one more to send in the deck, and we have cast outs we can hit. So we have at least four spells we can hit with this uh, Supreme Will. That puts us in okay shape right here. Oh wow. So there's the cast out for the Supreme Will. There's the cast out, and there's a glimmer. Uh, I'm in uh, pretty bad shape, I think. Really need to draw another draw two. The odds of us getting a draw two now have gone down pretty significantly, though. I don't think we could risk it by putting the Glimmer on top. I considered it. I considered just, like, slamming the Glimmer on top and then, like, Looking at our next five cards and hoping that we found another answer to it. Well, he drew his perfect card. Did he also get lucky and put something with a bomb in the graveyard? He did not, so at least that's something. So we're currently setting at a two turn clock. Kind of like to draw another Caracol. All right, well, we'll cycle the sensor. We'll cycle this. We will cycle this. We will play a land. I don't want to take that two damage. Um, it takes his it takes his entire turn to buy it back, which is absolutely great for him, but gives us one turn to try to draw something. 
Unfortunately, it's a two-turn clock either way. I think it was better to try to do it this turn than a later turn. Well, he doesn't have another artifact, at least. Or another land, at least. So, what do we want to draw now? Descend? We just want to draw a Descend. Can be a number of different cards now. Did I not tap white mana? Or blue mana? Sure. Alright, well the cat does something. Depends on what his hand is, how much it does, but it at least does at the minimum something. The very minimum it should be able to block at least this one turn. They just hard. Okay. Liliana's Mastery. I don't think they have anything that I care about them getting back. And they don't. It's just another Caracol. Snap block. We're definitely living on a wire here. The sin still a playable spell that gets us potentially somewhere. Uh, bottom, bottom. We've gone for uh, almost our whole deck here. Probably lose now. It's going to be hard for us to get through this turn. Alright, well, they milled themselves a little. There are 20 cards, friends. We're getting closer. They hit two lands, so we're dead. Well, we're not dead. But we are very close to being dead now. Not sure we have an out now. Guess we could draw another kitty, right? Yeah. Yep, there's one more kitty in our deck. Fumigate would technically get us another turn as well. Uh, I guess we have to counterspell this. So, a fumigate or a cat's the only way I can even see to get another turn. Linvalo's not in our deck, so that wouldn't work. Just kind of curious what all he has in his deck. We're dead. It's the first time I've lost to one that didn't have a bunch of negates. Yeah. Oop, never expected to beat this match when we got paired versus them. It's just not a winnable match.
So that's two and two. Both matches that we've lost to are just matches we expect to lose to when we choose to play this deck. Um, I want to thank all the new followers here today still, and anybody that's around, if they feel like it, they can uh, follow if they choose to. And in the links below, there's a link to my Twitter account and a link to my Twitch account. It'd be nice for follows on those as well, especially to YouTube. Thank you for following KJ Cool. 3902. So we're gonna to try to uh, we're gonna to try to snag this pity chest. All right. So let's click join match here. We won the dice roll. We're pretty happy about it. So we'll just click and play yes. Uh, this hand's great. Not a lot to think about. We'll just snap keep it. I've dropped so many frames in that though. Is the stream sputtering or anything? I don't know. I think I've played about everything. Maybe Blue Black Control? I've not played Blue Black Control yet. I've not actually cast a Scarab God. Opponent kept on top after he mulliganed. Evolving Wilderini. So we'll play this one. Evolving Wilds into Plains isn't something you see particularly often. So we're versus a millstone deck. Well, this deck also does not beat millstone decks. So, kind of another bad matchup here. And that's part of it. I have not tried that version of God Pharaoh's Gift, but I've played multiple other versions of God Pharaoh's Gift. So this is just, just another miserable match. Do have a counter spell for the first ring sanity. The problem is that like we can't beat their counter spells, and they never have to tap mana. We do have four cast outs though, so that helps a little. I apparently don't understand this card. Oh, okay, it's just when it comes into play. Sure, okay, I understand it now. I didn't read the text above the delirium box. I was like, how the hell did cards get in my graveyard? Gonna need to find a fumigate at some point. They are playing the white version, so they probably have like the open armory or whatever it's called. Which is kind of nice. I kind of would like to play Blue Black Scarab God. I may do that. I just keep playing approach though, though it's looking like we're not even gonna get the PD chest with approach. Mm. 
not sure what they're thinking about for their second main phase. Hey, they're back. Try to cast a disclaimer. I guess we want the approach. Put it on top, put it on bottom. Well, it's nice to secure at least an approach in our hand. They didn't have their fast draw though, so at least we have some some odds. So that one, that one's just tap for any color of mana. Yeah. Our opponent's one one, right? Yeah. Okay, they're cycling that. That puts a sorcery in their graveyard. So if they get an instant in their graveyard, they're going to be going pretty hard with these. Like these kill pretty quickly if they get the instant. Quickly enough that I may need to start thinking about using cast outs. Not this turn. This turn is just another glimmer. We don't want you, but we will accept you. It's kind of interesting right now that, uh, say we cast our approach, right? And he got Delirium. <laughs> Maniac Scribes would make us draw our approach on our next draw step. I don't know how good or relevant that is, but it's sure cute, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it matters at all, but it is sure cute. He's tapping mana this turn. He does have the two rivulets as well that I've got to pay somewhat of attention to. Return target permanent to his owner's hand. Each player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his graveyard. Um... I guess that's a sure. He's going to play that and we're going to mill three. And then six more. So we're going to be down to 27 cards? That's too much, I think. Huh. I think I'm going to cycle my sensor before I make any decisions on what I do this turn. Actually, probably the hieroglyph before the sensor. Some percentage chance that the sensor comes into play this game. Let's cycle this one too. I'm just looking for a second approach to make decisions easier. Hmm. I 
feel like we're close to dead. But not entirely. Didn't hit an approach, so that's good at least. So if they don't kill us, we at least get two draw steps to try to hit it. This puts a card back in our library. Maybe I'm supposed to not cast out that. Yeah, the uh, Angel Invention is just insanely good. And uh, like, the red spells you get give you so much more consistency too. Even the blue white, I don't know. They've uh, the uh, the non the versions without white spells have felt really weak to me versus the red decks, and I overly fear the red decks. Like, I am just terrified of all the red decks. That's four. Maniac Scrab or Scrab definitely gets the next one. Or the Rivulet gets it as well. Alright, well there's our approach. There's still two left in our deck. So we got like a one in ten chance to draw it. We get that we get that one in ten chance times two though. Alright, well, we'll cycle this. Hope we get there. We did not get there. Alright, well, 15 cards left. We could just be dead, friends. Three ca All four of our cast outs are gone, so if he has the uh, mill four, we have to look for a sensor. Well, all four of our sensors are gone too, so what about Supreme Will? One, two, uh, two Supreme Wheels left. So we have some outs to him being able to mill us for 13. He has two cards in his library. It could be a million different things. So we'll cycle, start with the cycle. That's a cataract. That doesn't really help. Mill three cards. All right, well, we got a pretty good chance to draw it. Didn't draw it. That's disappointing. It's probably enough to beat us. Yeah, the Snapper is really, really good. So is Fatal Push and Expertise. All of those cards are insane. Right, so this is a mill 13. We're dead. He has a counter spell. We're also dead. Um, I guess that card doesn't kill us. So I guess we're gonna draw some cards. Oh, I guess that card would kill us because then he mills us for eight, and we lose all of our cards. If we draw two. So yeah. We can't, uh, we can't get rid of the Fraying Sanity. So it looks like we have exactly one draw step to hit. And we've cycled cards onto the bottom. Therefore, the eight cards he's getting ready to mill us will have both approaches in it. We have no out. Yep, both approaches will be in these eight cards. There's one. There's just nothing we can do about it. We're dead anyway to the Maniac Scrab. But our, our other approach was going to be right there anyway. So, yep. Yeah, we got pegged. 
This match just doesn't seem like something we can win. Alright. So, we definitely don't want the 40s. We will take the dispels. We will take the summary dismissals. We will take the negates. We will take all the creatures that can win kind of quickly. Probably don't want the Limvalas. Um, don't want any of these creatures. Probably don't want these Fumigates. Even though they obviously would have did something that game. Oh, what bad card do we keep? All right. I guess we'll keep this if we have to keep one of them. Could have like Finger Nice or something and just crush us, but that's fine. Like I said, this, as soon as we saw what they were playing, we thought we lost. So, really just looking for a cat. Well, we got a cat. They can kill really fast, but I believe we have to keep the hand with the cat. We'll keep. This hand feels kind of weak, but we'll just keep it anyway. Do, 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 do. At least I didn't have a ministry. Minister. Oh. That's the thing that they didn't have. It's actually kind of bad for us that they do have it. Supreme Will might be moderately useful. We might be able to peg a fring. Would literally counterspell any... Maniac Scribe, Minister, or Fraying that it could hit. Give me something to counterspell that I want to counterspell, please. That is certainly something that I want to counterspell. The Sega Supreme Wheel makes me very happy. We're kind of really just wanting to play this Regal and be able to play a counter spell on every turn the rest of the game. That's the dream here. Well, they milled another one of our Regals. Hmm. Stop drawing after hubs, please. He's not playing any spell that worries me beyond belief. Kind of hoping he negates this. Alright, we'll 
we'll keep them both. Plan, have a counter spell every turn the rest of the game after we cast the uh, cat in, in progress. Hopefully he doesn't have a counter spell for the cat itself. If he does, that's not the end of the world. Alright, well the kitty litter's in play. It's a fairly fast clock if he doesn't just kill us somehow. It's actually a really fast clock if he just like doesn't kill us or have ways to bounce it or whatnot. Looks like he has a way to bounce it. Oh no, he just goes on Glimmer. Ooh, this little minister's gonna be online the whole game. It's up to five energy. Uh, bottom, bottom. All right. Hope we get our untapped step with the board relatively the same as it is. Tapping four mana, hopefully it's just Mill Me thirteen. We can beat Mill Me thirteen. Sweet, it was Mill Me thirteen. Alright, that's the one we can beat. It's not easy to beat, but that's the one that we can most likely beat. Actually we may not be able to beat that. Now that I think about it, we may not be able to beat that card. I guess we could draw... Oh, nope, we couldn't draw either of those. They're both gone. Yeah, that that, uh, that may be enough to beat us. Well, maybe not. Like, we have a chance to draw a cast out. There's still three of them in our deck. This kind of a three turn clock. Alright, still two cast outs in our deck. Ooh, that's a good one. Can't really counterspell that one out, or can we, without using both Supreme Wheels? Guess that ties up his mana. Tying up his mana seems okay. Maniac Scrap. Oh, we can't counterspell this one either. And he already has Delirium. Is that enough to win? Good shot that that's enough to win. I believe on board that beats us. It's a little disappointing. I think the Minister beat us too, though.
Yes, if he doesn't have any counter spell whatsoever, like double approach could still win. There's like one approach left in the deck. The cast out's kind of good. Cast this out on the scribe and attack. Down to 16 cards though. So we're down to 6 cards technically. We're down to 10 cards. Did I say 6? Probably have to hit another. Probably have to hit another uh, cast out to get there. The other Caracol is gone, so. It's just one cast out's the only relevant spell left in my deck. And he can have a number of spells left in his deck still. What is this? Well, if that resolves, I'm just dead. So I kind of have to negate it and hope he has nothing else. As badly as this is. Like, I don't have enough time to, like, replay it. He could buy, bring back the Sulk thing. If he's got... If he's got another Startled Awake in his hand, or another... I don't know, if he has a bunch of things, we're just dead. Startled Awake definitely kills us. Another Winds of the Rebuke pretty much kills us. Um, and the Gate probably kills us. Majority of our deck kills, or the majority of his deck kills us. And that's game. Our cast out was our next card, too. We were going to get there. Oh, well. Well, we got crushed. We beat three matches that didn't feel win. Or we won two matches that felt like we couldn't lose. And we felt we got paired versus three matches that just felt absolutely unwinnable. That's one of the... It's so one of the problems with this format, and one of the reasons I don't really like this format. Like, if we go back to round one, we played two different leagues today with two different decks. If we'd played this deck in League One, we would probably be 5 0. Whereas we ended up three, well, we'd be 5 0 or 4 and 1. Whereas we played this deck in this league, and we went 2 and 3, and like the matches weren't particularly close. And if we'd played the other deck in this league, we would probably be we would probably be two and three as well. So it doesn't feel like you can just pick a deck that has good matches across the board. It feels like you're having to run pretty well. I think I actually played pretty well today too. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching tonight. Uh, give us a follow on the YouTube or the Twitch channel if you want. Follow the Twitter if you like. Um, very much appreciate it. We're going to find somebody to host, and then we're going to get out of here. It's probably just going to be DeCandio, but somebody else may be on. Who knows? 
Yeah, we'll give it to we'll give it to Z Magic ninety four today. Appreciate you guys watching though. Sorry the games didn't go well.